Hello everyone, the leaks are out for Record of Ragnarok Chapter 51, and it's time to talk about a few of the big things we can gather from it before we get the full translation in a few days. So, before I get to that, I of course have to mention my subscriber goal for 2021 hitting 5,000 by the end of the year. We are 1,451 away, so if you're already a fan of the channel and you're not subscribed, you might as well to help us reach that goal. Every sub counts. The next thing is my Patreon. Since it's the start of the video, it's time to give a shout out to my wonderful patrons. Special thanks to Fuse, Neo, Dijon Redden, Anthony Chavez, Honey Mustard, Zach Rowitz, K God, Chris Redfield, Scratch23, Moonshadow935, Rat, Ryzen 4K, Artist, Mac Campaign, and Wave of Manga. Thank you all very much for supporting me on Patreon. I greatly appreciate it. And if you too want to get a shout out at the start of videos or access to reviews for solo leveling and the boxer, you can always become a patron as well. There's a link to my Patreon down in the description. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. So just like last month, I'm pretty much just going to have two big things to talk about uh, because they are things that I can kind of gather without having a translation. Even though we, we already kind of have some info, it's the Google Translate info from the Leaks website. And, I mean, that talked about, like, some shit called the Wave Season that was never even relevant. Like, that wasn't even a thing in the last chapter. It just seemed to be this really weird translation of the Underworld or something. I don't know. Um, so, two big things. First one, I may have at least been partially right. Uh, I came out with a Hajin theory video a few months ago, giving my idea for what exactly his origin is, how he really uh, relates to Zerafuku and Beelzebub. Uh, because of course it would be kind of weird if Beelzebub got shown in the same chapter that Hajin was introduced and had like nothing to do with him. It was also suggested that Beelzebub was aware of Hajin in some manner. Um, and we find out, to some extent, how Hajin ended up inside of Zerafuku. It seems like at some point, Hajin may not have been defeated because it seems like he's undefeated, but maybe he exhausted all of his power or something, and he reverted into this gross beetle worm state that Beelzebub found. Uh, it seems like he did some kind of experiments, uh, and then eventually implanted Hajin inside of Zerafuku. And I think the reason for this, um, there are two possible ones. The first one would be to sort of keep Hajin locked away for a while to make sure that he doesn't get out and cause trouble again. The other one could be that he put him in there so that he could feed off of the misery that Zerafuku would be absorbing uh, I'll be able to, well, we will know which one of these this is when we get the full translation, um, and we'll find out whether or not Beelzebub artificially created Zerafuku, or if he just found Zerafuku. I don't think it's super clear just based on the imagery, so that's something we'll be able to figure out once we get the full translation. Uh, now the next thing relates to Buddha. We have a few things in relation to Buddha in this chapter. Uh, the first is that he uses a new weapon from his Six Realm staff. This seems to be the Infernal Realm. It seems to be a scythe with a big, I don't know, j Eastern Dragon or some kind of creature's head on the back of it. Um, and that's pretty cool. So now we have five out of the six weapons, five out of the six realms. Uh, the only one remaining is the Preta Realm. I'm quite curious to see what exactly that will be. Um, now, apparently the way that this weapon, the infernal weapon, is activated is through Buddha experiencing hatred. Uh, and he seems to hate Zerafuku in the situ- or not Zerafuku, he seems to hate Hajin in the situation, uh, seemingly in relation to what happened to Zerafuku? Because once again, we still don't know exactly what happened to Zerafuku when Hajin took over his body. Uh, of course, Zerafuku is brought up in this chapter, in his in like the Hajin backstory, uh, so he's still relevant. Uh, it's not like last chapter where they mentioned Zerafuku once and then it's just he's not brought up ever again. Uh, so Zerafuku does seem to be kind of a focal point in this chapter for Buddha. Um, 
and he's very pissed about what happened. So him being angry, him hating Hajin is what summons this weapon. And they fight. Fortunately, Buddha is not useless uh, without his future sight. It seemed like the reason he got struck in the eye by Hajin's heaven piercing drill was not because he wouldn't have been able to dodge it necessarily, but because he didn't expect it to pierce the shield. At least that seemed to have been what I gathered from like the not very good Google translation, uh, is that he didn't dodge because he didn't think he would have to. He didn't expect it to pierce through the shield. Um, so Buddha is still pretty nice with it, even without being able to see into the future, but it's not enough. It's not enough. Hajin is way too strong for Buddha to deal with without his future sight. And eventually, Buddha is pierced through the stomach, which is not good. Because, like, for any normal person, that's a very fatal injury. In anime, they, they kind of are, like, whatever for the most part with, like, straight up impaling someone through the stomach, but... We don't really have, like, the best track record for that. I'm pretty sure the last guy who got straight up impaled was Heracles, and, well, you know how that one went. Um, so, not a great sign. However, Buddha is not super freaked out. He's still uh, very staunch in standing up to Hajin, um, and it seems like he may be trying to talk to Zarafuku, trying to get through to Hajin, uh, because the reason that he is not able to see Hajin's future is because there's no light in Hajin. So, what if Buddha was able to inspire that light in Hajin? Was able to change him in such a way that, ah yes, now I can see your future. It does sound kind of dumb, like redeeming the irredeemably, objectively evil demon guy. Um, however, it would be doing so, so that he can defeat him or kill him. Um, I do think Buddha is still very intent on saving Zarafuku, so I do think that's the intention here. Um, he is trying to do that, and the translation suggests some kind of enlightenment beyond the Eighth Consciousness. Um, and I don't know if this is a literal enlightenment, like Buddha gets a power-up, or it's what enlightenment is supposed to be, and that it's a mindset thing, and that Buddha just sets his mind on, I don't care if I'm gonna die, I'm gonna save Zerafuku. Um, something like that. Um, and this is where the Six Realm staff is important again, because we have not seen the weapon of the Preta Realm. Now, I really, really don't understand what the Preta are. Uh, I guess I could go do, like, a, a quick Google search, but as far as I understand, they're just, like, not super gods, but it seems to be like the realm of the enlightened. Okay, that wasn't correct at all. Um, it's the realm of the extremely hungry, those who undergo greater suffering than humans, which could actually work very well for this situation. Because you see, uh, most humans don't have to fight superpowered demon gods, have their eye gouged out, or be stabbed through the stomach. Uh, so I would say Buddha is is doing a little more suffering than your average human at the moment. Uh, so he is definitely in kind of the position to use that weapon. Uh, we don't know what the exact emotion was. It would be interesting um, if it was basically the opposite of the Infernal Realm. If it was something that he was able to unlock when he felt love. But then we would be kind of retreading Adam and Heracles, it'd be weird if all of the human-connected fighters who are really nice and cool had this love thing and then died. That'd be a really weird thing to keep retreading all the time, um, but it may be something like that, and it is possible that Buddha still beats Hajin. At this point, I don't know. I really don't know what the outcome of this fight is going to be, but I do think that finale is coming next month. It does definitely seem like the fight is ending next month. We are we are in that stage, that dramatic moment that we get right before the fight ends in the next chapter. Uh, so, I'm very much looking forward to that. Uh, and I hope you are too. So, uh, that's all I have to say about the leaks. I will, of course, be having a much longer, much more in-depth video in a few days when we get the full translation from Orang Scans. But until then, that's all I have to say for today's video. 
If you enjoyed, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. I do Record of Ragnarok leak discussions and chapter reviews every month. I also occasionally do some special videos like my Hajin Theory video, uh, so you should definitely check those out if you're interested. And you should subscribe so you don't miss any of them. If you enjoy other series such as Jujutsu Kaisen, Kangen Omega, Chainsaw Man, and Bleach, I do videos in those series as well, so if you're interested in those, you should definitely check out my channel. If you enjoy discussing Record of Ragnarok with other people, or you just enjoy the content I produce in this channel, I highly suggest you check out my Discord server. I've linked that down in the description. And of course, if you want to help support me and the channel directly, while also getting shoutouts at the start of videos or access to reviews for solo leveling in the boxer, you can also become a patron. There's a link to my Patreon down in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys around. Take care.